This special episode deals with the final redemption of one who was once a sworn enemy of Sandy Smith and her family and friends, George Anderson. It is the year 2032 and because George Anderson was willing to testify against his father Ted Anderson and Ted's partner in corruption, Leonard Wilson, George was later granted parole for his attempt at burning down the Tuscany Tavern. Now he is set to be released. George Anderson, the time has come. Today, you are to be released from this prison so you may have a chance to live a productive life. I am ready. Mother. And Mrs. Smith. I didn't expect to see you here. Your mother asked for my help after she learned of your upcoming release. You should know that there are many people, including my daughter Debbie, who still despise you for your past misdeeds, but I figured the best way to keep you out of trouble is to have you live and work elsewhere so you won't be reminded of your past. This is my ex-husband, Steve Mueller. He has agreed to take you in and get you started on your new life. Mr. Anderson, I can offer you two options. First, I own a nightclub in Tulsa and I can hire you as a bartender there. If you accept that, you will enter directly to the club's manager, Jack Watson. Also, I own a modeling agency in Dallas. You can work as a bodyguard to some of the models employed there. If you work there, you would answer to its general manager, Claude Det Rouge. Which option would be better for you? I think I would prefer option two. That way, I can remain closer to my mother, just in case. Very well. You will come with me and I will take you to Dallas. Normally, I'd never agree to hire a convicted felon to work with my models, but Mr. Miller and Mrs. Smith say you are a special case. I will put you to work on a trial basis and see how you perform. Thank you. So what exactly will I be doing? You will be accompanying models assigned to you on their work sessions. This will be your first assignment, Miss Cindy Evergreen. She's only been with us a few months, but she is quite popular. She has to travel a lot and so will you. Hello, and welcome to Aphrodite Agency. Let's get started. So over the next few months they traveled to various places for modeling sessions. So I grew up believing that I as both an English speaking white person and a Christian that I and others like me deserved to rule over America forever and that people who were different were threats to our well-being. And believing that made me want to hurt them any way I could. But did they ever hurt you first? No, they didn't. Ironically, my hatred and mistrust of them made me the threat to them. I became a criminal and went to prison because of my bigoted views. In prison, I was surrounded by people of color who hated cops like I had been. I heard stories from them about how the police were not seen as protectors of their community, but suppressors not much better than the secret police of fascist and communist states in the past. I learned about how white people were treated with kid gloves while blacks and others were outright murdered on the streets. One of the prisoners I came to respect later was a Muslim and he said his conversion to Islam while in prison made him a better person. He'd been raised a Christian, but his parents abused him, so he rejected their religion and found one better for him. So what is your religion now? I don't really know. I haven't practiced any religion in a while. My mother is still Christian, though, so there's that. I'm Catholic, but I only attend church with family members on holidays. I don't need religion in my daily life. That strikes me as cultish. Welcome. I am Jennifer Park and I will be your photographer. Are you ready to begin? Sure. Just tell me what to do. Well done. We will go through all the photos and decide which ones to use for the advertising campaign. Enjoy your trip back to Dallas. I am puzzled as to why models like you need bodyguards. I mean, why would anyone threaten you? I actually had an insanely jealous boyfriend who I nearly made the mistake of marrying last year. He opposed my becoming a model because he wanted my beauty all to himself and he said I was likely to cheat on him. 
I said if I made money for us, why should he care how I did it? And so I dumped him to assert my independence. Then he sent me threats of violence, along with calling me sexist insults I don't care to repeat, saying that if I couldn't have him, no one else should. Hence my request for a bodyguard. I see. Well, I hope I never have to deal with him, then. He sounds like a kind of woman she'd ever put up with. George Anderson. What the hell are you doing here? Didn't your mother tell you? I now work here as a bodyguard for one of the models here. I was sent here to start my life over after getting out of prison. Legally, you may have paid your debt to society, but... I still have a personal score to settle with you. That was for trashing my family's home nearly a decade ago. That was for trying to burn down the restaurant my mother co-founded. And that was for almost killing my future wife Carrie after you ruined our town's water supply. I only wish she was here to beat you too, but she is busy with police work, so I have to do it for her. Debbie, are you satisfied now? Yes. Thanks for inviting me here. And George, you'd better stay out of trouble. Or both I and Carrie will come after you. Goodbye. Welcome to the Tuscany Tavern. What would you like to order? I want a small pepperoni pizza and a glass of red wine. And why are you here? I thought you were making plenty of money as a sex worker. Don't talk about that here. I'm trying to put all that behind me to get along with my mother and sister. I understand. My wife and son doesn't know about you. And for their sake, I want to keep it that way. Of course. I was told to report to you. What's happening? One of the owners of our modeling agency is coming here. She wants to establish a new standard for us, called Find Beauty in Yourself by Seeing Beauty in All. That doesn't sound like the idea of a typical modeling agency. Aren't we supposed to be highly selective of those who want to become a model? If anyone can get the job, then the job is not special, right? We have our orders and I do see merit in trying to open people's minds about standards of beauty. So how will we proceed with this new campaign, Mrs. Miller? For many years, we have been content to have people come to us to be models and so we haven't had a properly representative group of people working for us. Now, I want Aphrodite Agency to go out to the communities and meet people on their level, to embrace all types. As a child, I suffered from low self-esteem because I was abused by both my mother and my sister. They called me ugly and worthless. It took many years to get myself out of that thinking. Denise, you must never think for one moment that you are not beautiful and special, because you are, to me, at least, and you can always trust me to treat you right, because you deserve it. To the end of my life, I will treasure you. I love you. Everything Sandy Smith said about you is true. You are my salvation. That was several years ago. Now I am thinking we as a modeling agency should do for the general public what my husband did for me as an individual. So I want you to go to places like the town Sandy Smith is mayor of and seek out people to be models, even if on a part-time basis. Sure. We can try that. I've been to that town and even attended a wedding there. And it was so beautiful. Good. Now if you will excuse me, I need to meet with some other people. So you actually want to make a movie of my and my sister Diana's lives, Mrs. Jones? You can just call me Vicky. And yes, I do. Debbie Smith of Carrie Sims told me all about how your sister tried to ruin the life of Debbie's mother, forcing them to fight back at her until they won. It makes for great drama. Diana Cowley was a powerful villain. 
and people love stories about the bad guys getting punished. Your sister's story could be a perfect example of why narcissists should never be tolerated in society. They do incredible amounts of damage. I'd think people would have learned that from the presidency of Donald Trump. Anyway, I will agree to your proposal, on one condition. I get to play myself in the movie. I want people to see the real me, not some idealized version of me played by some hot actress. Yes, I agree to your terms. One week later, Denise is ready to begin acting in the planned movie. Vicky Jones has brought her production crew to Tulsa for a shooting. Denise, I'd like you to meet the actress I hired to play your sister. This is Georgia Palmer, who played her mean Benson, a villain in The Blazing Beauty Show. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Mueller. Wow, you do bear a striking resemblance to my sister. That's mostly due to makeup and costuming. I don't really know what your sister was like so you will have to give me details on how to play her. Think about someone who has no redeeming qualities, yet thinks the world owes her a living and cares for no one else except what she can use them for. That was Diana Cowley in a nutshell. So she was even worse than my Hermine Benson role? Got it. Thanks for inviting me to this event. And why not? You are my wife, Suzanne. Where you go, I go and vice versa. My first acting job in a movie. I've somehow become way more successful in Hollywood since converting to Islam. I had no idea Muslims were so popular around here. People in general are becoming more tolerant and accepting of differences. It's not about you being Muslim. If you were a supporter of groups like Al-Qaeda, you would be rejected. Seems like the paparazzi are everywhere. Then let's give them something to look at. So are you trying to be the next Will Smith, a rapper turned actor? No. I'm trying to be the first Scott Miller here. I see no point in comparing myself with others. Plus I certainly have no plans to slap idiotic comedians in public. Scott, have you heard the news about your mother yet? What news? I blocked her about a month after her last confrontation between us and her at the UU church and I got married at. She was sending me links to anti-Islam sites. Your mother? My sister? She is dead. I got a call from her cell phone and it was a doctor in Houston. He said she was in an accident and suffered massive internal bleeding. The bleeding was stopped but... But she refused a blood transfusion and died rather than betray her cult's teachings. I was afraid this might happen someday. Damn the watchtower. They have claimed another victim. I assume Islam has no teachings against blood transfusions. Not at all. That's one of many things that makes Islam a better religion. Several hours later, Scott returns to Asia. And their newborn daughter. My mother. Now I have lost her forever. <laughs> I'm glad we named our baby Vicky, after both your cousin Vicky Sims and your mother Victoria. I know you will always miss your mother, but I and our daughter are your family now. Let us pray for your mother, that Allah may forgive her for her mistakes. May Allah's will be done. Aunt Lucy, I was wondering if you would want to have a memorial service for my mother. She already had a funeral attended by her fellow witnesses. But we were also her family, even though we left her cult. That's actually a good idea. We all did love her even though we were rejected by the Watchtower for abandoning it. Plus it would be a good excuse for us to reunite. So where should we have the meeting? How about the Tuscany Tavern? As the owner, I can close the restaurant for one day so we can have a private party for only ones we invite. Agreed. Let's have the party one week from now. 
so we will make pizzas for the guests at this party. But no pork toppings or anything made from pork or bacon. Then we can have cheese for a topping. And perhaps beef and vegetables? Hello, what is your name? I am Daniel Gordon. Lucy Sims is my daughter. Yes, you are on the guest list. You may enter. Welcome, Father. Do you want help in the kitchen? I seem to be among the first to arrive. No, we're good. Just take a seat and wait. Mother Lucy, I have wonderful news. Penny just gave birth to her and James' son less than an hour ago. They have named him Vince. Debbie, Mother Sandy, James, Richard, Annika, and Wayne Bentley are all at the hospital with Penny. I'm glad they have something of their own to celebrate. Have a seat at the table with Vicky and my father. Paul and I will be graduating from high school in a few weeks. I'm so excited to start the next chapter in my life. Are you still planning to get married this summer? Yes. Paul is my soulmate if there ever could be one. He makes me happy like no one else. And Carrie, would you be the maid of honor at my wedding? Sure, I'd be delighted to do that. Oh, your baby is so adorable, Scott. Thanks for bringing her. You're welcome. Her first name is Vicky, after Vicky Sims, but we will also call her by her middle name, Dinah. Who is the banging on the door? I will answer it. Arthur Miller. What are you doing here? You were not invited to this event. And yet my son Scott saw fit to inform me of it. Clearly he wants to see me at least one more time. Please have him come out to me. And let me see my new granddaughter as well. Alright, one moment. Father, this is my new daughter. Now that I am a father myself, I appreciate you even more than before. Which makes the fact that I had to separate myself from you and mother even more painful. And I have already vowed that even if my daughter does not remain Muslim as an adult, I will not disown her like you and mother did me. Or my grandmother and mother did Lucy before me. I will never be bigoted against anyone merely for being different from me. I understand. The funeral I attended at the Kingdom Hall in Houston seemed so empty without you there, even though many others who were loyal witnesses showed up. And that is why. I have decided to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses and join another religion. I don't think Islam is right for me, though, so I will begin searching for another path. Aisha and I sometimes attend the Unitarian Universalist Church in Los Angeles where we got married. Maybe there is a UU church in Houston you can visit. In any case, I wish you well, Father. So now all my living family members are out of the cult, including my father. Praise be to Allah. Father, you say you have succeeded in making a device that can enable me to see normally again? Yes! I was inspired by Star Trek, the next generation, so I made something similar to what Geordi LaForge wore. You can't be serious. I always thought LaForge's visor was stupid. Why would you duplicate that? No, I did not make my version of a visor look like a woman's hair clip. Give this device a chance. You will have to undergo surgery to make a connection between the visor and the vision processor of your brain. I see. Ah, uh, no pun intended. Laura. I'm scared. I've never had to undergo surgery before and the thought of scalpels and needles poking into my flesh, especially my head, is terrifying. Why be so afraid? Your father wouldn't recommend the surgery for you if he wasn't sure it would be safe for you. And people undergo surgery all the time. I know. But I'm still afraid. Would you really rather end up blind eventually? Come on, Suzanne. I'm sure this will be good for you. I'll be here to support you all the way. And even if something does go wrong, we can deal with it, 
like anything else that may come our way. Do you trust me? And do you trust your father? Yes. I can't understand what's wrong with me. Why am I like this? I've never seen Suzanne so terrified before. How can I deal with this? I've dealt with patients with tomophobia on several occasions. It's not a good idea to force matters. We just have to give Suzanne time to get herself ready and willing for the procedure. I remember you and Suzanne telling me about a teenage girl who was blind in the town in Texas. Hermine Dawson. What if we offered her the surgery and she underwent it first? If she comes out of it okay, maybe that will persuade Suzanne to accept the procedure too. I hope so. So I have developed this device that can be implanted on your daughter's head to enable her to see again. When you and Hermine are ready, come to Los Angeles so she can have the surgery. As a single mother, I am the head of a poor family. We struggle constantly to make ends meet. How can we afford the surgery? Do you have health insurance? Yes, I do. Then your insurance company should cover the costs. Based on what you've told me, this sounds like an experimental procedure that we think is risky, so we will only pay for half of the cost. You will have to pay for the other half. Those bastards. So now we will have to save thousands of dollars over a year or two to grant or mean her side back. Of course, it will be worth it. But still, maybe I can help. I was a sex worker and porn star for over a decade and in that time I made over 300k. I still have some of that money in a savings account. How much? About 30k. Yes. That would pay for all the surgery, no need to even involve the insurance company. Then all the money is yours. What's wrong? I just think it ironic that the money to help her mean is coming from an industry I always considered immoral. You were raised to think that way. The reality is much more complex. An industry is only immoral if it hurts people. And most of the time I wasn't hurt by my time as a prostitute or porn star, nor did I hurt anyone else. I was just using my body to comfort or entertain others and getting paid well for it. Why should that be considered evil? because sex is involved. I understand. Hermine and her mother prepare to go to Los Angeles to undergo the procedure to restore Hermine's vision. So your sister is paying for your surgery out of her savings? Yes, otherwise, we couldn't afford it. I always knew Rose was a loving person deep down, even when my mother condemned her for being a prostitute. Interesting. Rose. It seems I owe you an apology. Why? I honestly thought you were the scum of the earth because of your lifestyle and profession choices. And that perception stemmed from my own background. My birth mother was a prostitute, porn star, and drug dealer and she forced me into child prostitution and pornography. She and others really violated me in the worst way and I still have emotional scars from the abuse. I assumed you were like my birth mother. But you are not and perhaps you were not even a year or two ago. There is a reason why pornography and prostitution, along with stripping and other such services, are called adult entertainment. No child should ever be made to do such things, they simply have no instinct for sexual behavior yet and therefore cannot consent to any such thing. People like your birth mother disgust me to no end. I would have killed her if I'd known who she was and what she was doing to you back then. Well, she is in prison now and she will never be part of my life again, even after she is released. I spoke to my Uncle Brad last month and he told me that my birth mother will be coming up for parole in about two more months. I want her to stay in prison until she serves her entire sentence. Forty years, no less. I agree. So good luck with that. A couple of days later. Hermine and her mother fly to Los Angeles and meet with Daniel Hudson and Suzanne Hudson at a hospital. I have asked this hospital to give you a special discount for the surgery, 
so now it will only cost you $10,000. That's still a huge chunk of money to me, but my daughter regaining her vision is worth a million dollars. Suzanne, where are you? I'm right here, Hermine. I promise, I won't leave you. Why haven't you undergone the procedure yet? Well, because I am not yet blind, but you have been blind for many years, so you need this more than I do. I can wait a little longer for my surgery. That is very considerate of you. I can understand why Vicky admires you so much. Hermine is then taken to the operating room. Hermine, I am Dr. Lee and I am on the surgical team that will be attaching the visor to your face and connecting it to your brain. Are you ready? Of course. Go ahead and put me under. Hermine. Can you see me? Yes, mother. I see you perfectly. I can see everything. This is so wonderful. My life will be so much better. I'm so glad it worked out for you. Soon it will be my turn. Father, how soon can I get the surgery? Maybe next week. We will talk with the hospital staff about scheduling you. I'm glad you are no longer fearful of the procedure. Well, I just needed to see someone else come out of it and be better for it. I'm still nervous about it, but I'm sure it's not something a little anesthesia won't fix. Fred, my brother, I'm glad you and I can carry on the legacy of our father, Dave Owen. He may have had failures and made mistakes as a Baptist minister, but the Bible speaks of a faithful remnant that will continue to stand up for the Lord. We can be that remnant. I agree, Nicholas. This society will be better off with people like us in charge. We shouldn't have to share it with those subversive leftists. I still can't believe that I, Cindy Everson, was kicked off a school board for trying to establish a Christian-based education in the town I live in. Likewise, I, Leah Lord, as Miss Everson's staunchest ally, was fired as a school district superintendent for wanting the same as her. People look at the town she and I grew up in and see it run by atheists for atheists, with no regard for the religious traditions that made America what it is. Sandy Smith and her allies won't last long, I'm sure. We have powerful media personalities like Ruf Scumpa on our side, as well as Republican leaders in Texas and most other states. Eventually, memories of my father and of Ted Anderson as mayor of his town will fade and a new generation will grow up knowing only Sandy Smith as an authority figure. And we will appeal to popular prejudices to undermine the credibility of her and those other liberals. Meanwhile, in Dallas. Trigger warning, acts of domestic violence are about to be depicted. Rebecca Ann Wilson, you are in deep shit with me now. Why? Because I refuse to crank out another baby for you? I've already had six kids. Five of whom have disowned me. Why isn't our baby Janet enough? I already agreed she will have no contact with my other relatives. That's not what I'm talking about. I've noticed in the past few months that my bank accounts have been badly drained and now it has gone to the point where I can't even pay our monthly bills. You have been spending our money faster than I can make it on buying luxury items you don't need. You don't even work for a living, you bitch. You want me to divorce you, Ted? No, but I do want you to pay for what you have done. And since you have no money to pay me, you can give me your life. Ted. No.